Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is gambling for resurrection. The big question we're going to address in today's lecture is why might leaders continue fighting losing wars? Let's think back to last time here. We know that governments are better informed about international affairs than their citizens are. But this has the potential to create a principal agent problem. Citizens remove leaders as a method of punishing bad leaders. However, citizens don't see the signals that are sent to the leaders. They don't see the information that leaders have. And the citizens only see the results of what the leaders do with their information. So leaders get information about whether a war is going to be good for them in, in particular, them as an individual, or good for the public as a whole, or bad for the public as a whole. And so what we saw in the last video was that a leader could go ahead and fight a war that is bad for the whole, but with the potential of actually something good happening during the course of the war. And because the people only see the results of the war, the people will think that the leader is competent, even though if the citizens had the information that the leader had at the beginning of the war, the citizens would think that the leader was stupid and bad. So this information asymmetry can cause problems in the initiation of wars, but what we're going to see here is that it can also cause problems in the termination of wars. So think about this. Think as though you are a leader and you start a war because you honestly believe it's the right thing to do. So you get this signal. Remember that you have this information asymmetry. You know what's going on better in the world than the citizens do. And you get the signal sent to you that, hey, we really need to go out and fight this war because it's going to be good for not only for me as the leader, but it's actually going to be good for the people as a whole. If a representative citizen were in charge of the country, then he would also want to take this action as well. It's not just me as the leader. This is actually good for the country. That's what I'm seeing as the leader. That's what you're seeing as the leader. But this is just a signal. It's not necessarily what's actually going to happen. You could get a signal that says, yeah, we need to go to war here. But then as it turns out, the war goes very poorly. And as a result of this war going very poorly, the leader knows that you, he should negotiate peace. So you're in this situation, you go out and fight a war because you actually honestly think it was the right thing to do. And given the information at the time, anyone else in the country, if they were in charge and had the same information as you, they'd be going out and fighting this war as well. But when you go out and do it, the war goes poorly and you know you should negotiate peace. Remember though, there's still this information gap. Citizens don't know whether you as the leader were doing the right thing at the time or you are just being incompetent or you're being self-interested. They only see what actually happens on the battlefield, what's getting reported in the news. They don't see the information that you had at the time that you fought the war. They only see the results and the outcomes of war. So this creates another problem if you're a leader. You have two choices. You know that the war is going badly for you. You could continue fighting the war. If you lose, well, big deal. You are probably going to be kicked out of office anyway, so you're really getting the same outcome. On the other hand, if you win, you confirm your original brilliance, right? So you had this signal that said at the very beginning, hey, we should go out and fight. As it turns out, when you acquire more information by fighting battles and so forth, you learn that it was a bad idea to go out and fight. But if you continue fighting and maybe something randomly goes your way and you get lucky and things turn out very well for you, well, then you can make this story, you can spin this as though you knew this all along and this was always the right thing to do and at no point would any representative citizen of my country actually wanted to negotiate a peace. I was doing the right thing the entire time. Option two is you just negotiate peace straight away. Now, this is in the best interest of the country. After you've started fighting this war, this is when you have learned that this war is actually bad and a representative citizen of your country would want to negotiate peace. But if you do this, you're screwed because you're sort of waving the white flag to your citizens saying, yeah, you know what? I had a bad idea. This wasn't a good idea. I shouldn't have fought this war. So that's why I'm negotiating a peace settlement right now. So this happens uh, a few times in history, and there's a few notable examples. So Hitler, at the end of World War II, it's very clear that Germany is going to lose the war. But Hitler waits a very long time before he actually starts kind of conceding. He doesn't really concede, he just ends up killing himself. If you've ever seen the movie Downfall, that's when Hitler finally realizes that this war is not going to end well for him. And he instead, all that time, continues fighting this war, 
partially because, well, he thought it was going to be good for him, but also because he knows that he, if he settles, if he tries to negotiate a peace treaty with the Allies, he himself is probably in deep trouble. So he has all the incentive in the world to continue fighting precisely because of what we see on this slide here. So ultimately, Hitler ends up dead for him, doesn't work out very well, but that doesn't mean it wasn't good for him, although bad for his country and bad for basically the world in general, for him to keep fighting at that time. Uh, going back uh, to the previous World War, again, a German leader, this is Kaiser Wilhelm. So the First World War, Germany thinks that they're going to win this one pretty quickly. Their plan is to invade France from the north. So you can see the red lines on that map there. That was the Germany offensive plan. And they thought this was going to work out very well. France would be defeated very quickly. As we all know, World War I ends up taking forever and the Germans get bogged down in trench warfare. But you don't see that Germany concedes this war straight off after they fight for a while and then realize that their their plans of invading France in just like a couple of months, it just isn't going to happen. They continue fighting. Why? Well, think about this incentive for Kaiser Wilhelm over there. If he fights and gives up, then that looks bad for him. If he fights and continues fighting, although it might be bad for his people and a representative citizen would want to concede if they were in charge, for him... For his personal self-interest, he can look like he, he was doing the right thing all along by continue fighting in the hopes that things will turn around. Now, lastly, going back to Iraq, remember that one of the key points of fighting the war in Iraq was that Iraq was developing weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons, and although as we continue going and fighting in Iraq, we quickly realize that you know these weapons of mass destruction, these nuclear weapons didn't actually exist, the Bush administration doesn't really back down on that point for essentially forever. So there you go. There's another example. All right, that wraps up our explanation of gambling for resurrection. And in the next video, we're going to start talking about how citizens and countries can combat these leader preferences by talking about accountability and how democratic accountability might vary from autocratic accountability. Hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you next time. Take care.